All right, so the first step to installing Active Directory is you have to have a Windows Server operating system. And again, in this case, we're going to go with Windows Server 2008 R2. So on the screen, I have some steps listed that you have to go through when installing Windows Server 2008 R2. Now, you don't need to worry about memorizing these steps. And as you possibly already know, if you've ever installed Windows Server 2008 before, it's a fairly simple process. But I wanted to go ahead and have these steps listed for you. And included with this course, we give you a PDF document of all of these screenshots. So feel free to print them out and have this in front of you if you want to have a step-by-step -step guide as you're following along. But basically, what do we have here? Step one verify that you meet the minimum hardware requirements. And I have here a link to Microsoft's website where they list these requirements. So let me go ahead and click on that link now. And this will take us to Microsoft's website where they list the minimum system requirements. Now, I don't really want to spend any time on this and I don't want you to get caught up in this because pretty much almost all of today's computers are going to meet these system requirements. I mean, unless you have a pretty old computer, which by the way, I don't recommend that you use that computer as, well, any domain controller, but definitely not the forest root domain controller. But you'll see here that you only have to have a 1.4 gigahertz processor, half a gig of RAM, 32 gig of hard drive space, and a standard monitor, DVD, keyboard, mouse, etc. The only thing here that I will point out that is of any significance is right here that you have to have an X64 processor. And that's because Windows Server 2008 R2 only comes with a 64-bit option. If you don't have a computer that supports 64-bit operating systems, then all you have to do is go back to Windows Server 2008 pre-R2, okay, go with the regular Windows Server 2008. There is a 32-bit version there, and most of everything we're going to cover will still be the same. There are some small enhancements, some differences that you'll see with R2, but for the most part, you can still follow along. All right, so let me go ahead and close out of here and get us back over to our task list. After we've verified that our computer meets our minimum hardware requirements, we're going to need to boot from the installation media. So I'm going to put in a Windows Server 2008 R2 DVD. When we boot from that media, it will take us into an installation wizard, which will prompt us to select an installation language. From there, look at step four. This is about as easy as you can get. Click to install now. Yep, there's actually a button that says install now. <laughs> now from there, the next step is you'll be prompted for a product ID. And I have it listed here if you have one. If you don't have one, that's okay, because what Microsoft has done is they've made it that it's the same media if you purchase the operating system as if you are using the evaluation copy. Okay, so if you don't have a product ID, no problem, you can, you'll be prompted for it later. And if you still don't have one, well, then you'll be able to go ahead and use the product during the evaluation trial period. The next thing we'll be asked for is to select a version of the operating system. So we need to decide whether we want standard or enterprise or data center or web edition, okay, depending on what version we have. We'll need to check a box saying we accept the license terms. We will then need to choose custom or upgrade. And in this case, it'll have to be custom because this is a blank machine. We're not upgrading. We'll talk a little bit about upgrading later on in this course. We then need to select and or format a hard drive or partition. And then from there, we sit back and relax and just let the installation happen. There's not a lot to this installation anymore. Uh-oh, there's a part two. Don't worry, the part two is not really that big a deal either. This is really kind of a post-installation task, more so than the actual installation. The installation should be complete once you wait out all of the different steps and the reboots and things like that. And then you will be prompted to create or change the administrator password. And I'll show you that when we get there. And then you need to go through and complete the initial configuration tasks, which again is a utility that'll pop on the screen automatically. What are some of these tasks? Things like setting your time zone, configuring networking, like giving it an IP address, giving it a computer name, 
deciding whether you want to enable automatic updates and or feedback, downloading and installing the latest updates, always a, a very good idea. And I will tell you, there are some additional steps that I'm skipping here because we're gonna do them outside of the initial configuration task utility. But a couple extras that we're gonna have here are enabling remote desktop and configuring Windows Firewall. So these are all the things that we're about to do.